Welcome to the second Women's Leadership Summit. And, the re and when there are two, the second one, that means the first one was a raging success, and it really was. So those of you who were here last year, um, I don't have to tell you, for those of you who are here for the first time, um, you can catch up, we'll let you. And then I know some of you went back and said, ah, this is a good time, and you brought new friends and additional people to come, and thank you for doing that. This is a, this is a remarkable opportunity to network, uh, to learn who each other are, and the blessing we have in West Virginia is that we are a small enough group of people, we would be remiss if we didn't know one another and use each other as resources. With that, I'd like to introduce one of our most tremendous resources, and that's the First Lady. Kathy Justice has done a remarkable job in raising leaders. She, um, she of course, married her high school sweetheart, our governor, Jim Justice, and managed to, to help him get to where he is today. She has two extraordinary children, and we all know them, and one of whom manages the Greenbrier, and that's Dr. Jill Justice. So we've got a, we've got a good thing going here, and we, um, we owe a lot to Kathy Justice for her leadership. And among the things she has been doing as the First Lady is she has been focusing on um, the community and schools. And Kathy's background uh, with her degree from Marshall University in secondary education lends her skills nicely to this project. In community and schools, and I think this theme I'm going to pick for the day, and you're going to tell me if you don't like it, and we'll change it, but because <clears throat> I have no script, it's nice not to have a script, is how do we create a sustainable West Virginia? What is sustainable? And, and sustainable is a very a long series of issues and topics and things we do to improve our communities, to improve our lives, to improve the lives of others. And that's what the First Lady is doing with, with her interest in, in education, with community and schools. It does show that communities and the children thrive when there's that synergy and partnership between education and uh, the community it's serving. So with that, let me welcome to the podium the First Lady, Kathy Justice. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kathy. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. Um, it seems like I'm in this room a lot, but it's so awesome to see everyone here today. The enthusiasm on everyone's face and just the interest in the state, and our state is thriving right now. Uh, I'd like to thank Steve Roberts for putting all this together. We think we have to give him our dues today for sure. Uh, some of you may be interested, as Kathy mentioned, a little bit of my background. I graduated from Marshall in a secondary degree in education. Um, I have I surely worked behind the scenes in a lot of things. Uh, my, I grew up and my parents had an electrical business, which when they passed away, I kind of took over for a while. Uh, we have farming businesses. We have all kinds of uh, forestry businesses, Christmas trees and everything, and I'm all a part of that. Um, I'm on a bank board, I was on a bank board, and just um, I'm just not a foo-foo person. I get down and work and our family works, and so that's, I think it's always kind of interesting to know. Um, we also have some racehorses. I'm not sure that's a great business right now, but you know, it's kind of, you know, it comes and plays, but it's fun anyway. Uh, as Kathy mentioned, I have two wonderful children, uh, Jay and Jill. Um, Jill uh, runs the Greenbrier now. She's a medical doctor. And so when Jim became governor, you know, he had to uh, not be a part of any of the businesses or anything, so Jill took over. So she is in charge of the clinic. If y'all have ever been through the Greenbrier Clinic, I'm sure you've seen her. And this is just a, a, a huge role for her. She's a medical doctor, a new mom. Our grandson will be two years old on Saturday of this year. So we're just so enthusiastic about this. And so she kind of wears three hats, wife, mother, and business person. And she stays really busy, but she's always done this because her ethics have always been work. I mean, that's... Her, and. Um, she has always done this since a child. Her time management has, I think, been her greatest asset because she was a um, basketball player, went to Clemson on a basketball scholarship, then came back, came back to Marshall. So, you know, time management has always been a huge part of her life, and she's managed everything. Our son, Jay, was a graduate of uh, Virginia Tech, and uh, he uh, 
I just liked the agriculture business so much. That's why he went to school there. And uh, he it, he's just great. He runs all the businesses and does such a wonderful job. And uh, he's just so good. And his wife, Catherine, uh, she grew up in Roanoke. And uh, she started working in a boutique when she was out of college and just started working her way up as a salesperson. And then a couple of years ago, she and her friend uh, bought the business themselves. So, you know, they're a working family. And then Adam, Jill's husband, Adam is a lawyer. Adam is uh, now at the Greenbrier as one of the CEOs and helping here run everything, all the financial stuff. So our family works. I mean, we work and we know the value of it. And it's so hard to balance everything like um, working, your family. I know most of you have families and children and it's tough. It is really tough and I know that. So I admire everyone here for what you're doing. And as we travel all over the state, Vicki and I, we go a lot of places. We see a lot of things. By the way, this is Vicki Shannon, my great, great assistant. She's wonderful. And uh, we go across the state and see so many women in great roles and so uh, instrumental roles that we didn't have as we were growing up. All of these technical things where women now are doctors, pilots, just all the STEM research and all this stuff, I mean, that is the way that we're going now. And it's just so wonderful. And I tell the kids in the schools and all the students that you can be anything that you want to be in life. You aren't restricted just to do one thing or be a housewife or, you know, as of 50 years ago, that's gone. I mean, you go for the moon and you do whatever you want in life. So that's what I'm telling everyone. Um, as you all know, we have a lot of notable West Virginia ladies, which I'm sure you all are all aware of. Pearl S. Buck, who was the author for The Good Earth, she is at Hillsborough, which is about an hour and a half's drive from here. Katherine Johnson, and I know you all probably saw the sign as you came in to White Sulphur today. Uh, she doesn't live here right now, but she grew up here, and people recognize her and think she's wonderful, and she did, does such a wonderful, wonderful job. So we're so proud of her to have that legacy for White Sulphur Springs. Mary Lou Retton, you all know she was a great gymnastics. Kathy Matea with country music. And most of all, we're probably most familiar with Jennifer Gardner, Garner, who is our actress and just a real supporter of West Virginia. Uh, they have so much to offer, and we're just so proud of what they've done. I've traveled throughout the state we have for about two and a half years, and my initiative is called Communities in Schools. Uh, we're in 11 counties now. We're going into three more in January. So uh, in the Greenbrier County, so we'll be in 15 counties. Uh, this, uh, we have some people here today that are on the board of that uh, initiative that I'm doing. And it's just so great. We're going to the schools. There are site advisors in the schools and they stay there all the time. They're hired by the county. These have to be really special people. And the whole thing about communities in schools, if we just have one child and one caring adult to mentor that child and make sure they're doing all right and what they should do. They'll come out, they'll go through school, graduate high school, go on to technical school or college, and that's what we're striving for, just to shoot for the stars and do all you can do. And on the way, we deal with everything from uh, not having a toothbrush to uh, food, of course, shelter, clothing. We do everything. We have uh, washers and dryers in school when the children come in and uh, they need their clothes washed and they don't have any means to do that at home. We do that at school. So we just do everything. We just, uh, one story, a little girl that was in Martinsburg, her name was Miracle. And uh, she was like in fourth grade, I think. And uh, she was a foster child. Well, her mother said she hated to come to school. She just didn't like it. And I don't know for what reason. If she didn't feel good about it or feel good about herself that she was worthy enough to come to school and maybe didn't have what the other kids had. So her mother stopped Vicki and I not long after that and said, uh, that Miracle now loves to come to school because the uh, middle school there had implemented a gymnastics program after school. So th this was a way to get her involved and make her feel good about herself. So she came, she came to the gymnastics program, was coming to school, had great attendance, and attendance is a huge thing that we're dealing with in the state. You know, the attendance has been so bad, but we're seeing great increases in people coming to school. Uh, and so that is something that we're battling. And then, like 
uh, graduation rates. Uh, we have one county that has 100% graduation rate, and all of them, uh, we have more than one county, and we have like advisors that kind of walk the seniors through when they get their senior year or before that but when they get to their senior year and they're lacking some credits or need to really work on something we have people that are helping these young men and women get through school and make them feel worthy about themselves then we're trying to get them to go to technical schools or colleges and so it's just an ongoing thing from kindergarten to until they graduate from high school uh, I do believe we have great leaders and guiders in our state. We have women that are great role models, and we want you to keep doing what you're doing because it's a terrific thing. I want to thank you all today for having me here at this conference. It's just a wonderful thing, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you, and I'm, I'm just so happy that you would even uh, uh, let me come and speak to you all and be a part of you because it's really, really great. And while you're here at the Green Bar, please have fun. Go to your meetings and, and do that and learn all a lot. And let's just keep bringing West Virginia forward. Last of all, I want everyone to have a happy holiday, a safe holiday. And uh, we'll see you on the way. And when you see communities and schools, please ask your uh, county superintendents about what's going on. And if your county isn't involved, we'd love to have you come on board. So remember that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.